Hello, I am Gauri Rao Sharma. In today's session, we will learn about the life skill called self-awareness, which is the seventh life skill identified by the World Health Organization. We will also learn about simple practices such as daily journaling that can enhance self-awareness. We will discover concepts such as Bandura self-efficacy and imposter syndrome. Let me start with the definition of self-awareness. Self-awareness is the ability to see oneself clearly and objectively through reflection and introspection. Let me now hand it over to my team members to read out their chapters. Hello, I am Annapurna. I want to talk about what self-awareness is and why self-awareness is important. Courtney McCammon, an expert on positive organizational psychology from Claremont Graduate University says, Self-awareness theory is based on the idea that you are not your thoughts but the entity observing your thoughts. Self-awareness is comparing our feelings, responses, actions, performance etc. against our value system and taking action to close the gaps. Let me share with you two stories about self-awareness in action. Bob at work. Bob struggles with creating a quarterly report at work. After being aware of his problem, he reflects on it and finds out that the activity of writing it up cohesively and clearly is where the problem lies. He takes three steps. He joins a course to improve his writing. He finds a great colleague to get his work reviewed and create a reusable template to reduce the writing part. Monique at home. Monique develops a feeling that she is being taken for granted by her spouse. She practices self-awareness reflection to find if she could be contributing to the problem. She finds out that she does not appreciate her spouse enough or take note of his good qualities. This reflection helps Monique to take steps that change the negative feeling of being taken from granted. Self-discovery is an exciting journey and taking steps to make ourselves better after this discovery is a creative experience. Here are some steps to cultivate self-awareness. Practice meditation and full mindfulness. This will help you be aware of your internal state. Practice yoga. The stretching and bending involved in yoga will teach you self-acceptance. Making time to reflect, go over your thoughts, feelings and behaviors to see where you met your standards, where you failed them and where you could improve. Journaling. Writing down your thoughts and feelings helps you to become more aware and intentional. This record will help you when you share your wins and failures with others. Ask the people you love. Their inputs could be useful to you in self, your self-awareness journey. There could be some blind spots that you miss during your reflections. Talking to someone will help to discover these blind spots. Are you ready for the journey? Bon voyage. Let me end this chapter with a quote from Veronica Tugalova. To know yourself, you must sacrifice the illusion that you already do. Hello, I am Ashwin. This article is about the concept of self-efficacy. The concept of self-efficacy was proposed in 1977 by Canadian-American psychologist Albert Bandura. Self-efficacy is the perceived belief that we have in our own abilities. It is the foundation of human inspiration, motivation, performance accomplishments, and emotional well-being. People with high self-efficacy are confident of their capabilities. They approach difficult tasks as challenges to be mastered. They have high aspirations and strong commitment. They heighten and sustain their efforts in the face of failure. They measure success in terms of self-improvement rather than by triumphs over others. People with low self-efficacy doubt their capabilities. They shy away from difficult tasks. They view these as personal threats. They have low aspirations and weak commitment. When faced with difficult tasks, they dwell on their personal deficiencies, the obstacles they will encounter, and all kinds of adverse outcomes they may get. Rather than concentrating on how to perform successfully, these are the four ways you can develop self-efficacy. 
mastery of experiences. Draw confidence from your past successes, reminiscing about a task successfully completed in the past. This strengthens your self of self-efficacy. Social modeling. Learn from your role models. Social modeling is the act of witnessing other people successfully completing a task and drawing inspiration from them. Social persuasion. Learn from social influence. Find a right mentor or a coach to master self-efficacy. Emotional state. Learn from your style of judging yourself. Identify the mental roadblocks that come in when you are assigned a difficult task. Look at the pattern and define your own strategy to manage this pattern. Please remember not to interpret the stress reactions in any challenging task as signs of poor performance. Please remember not to interpret the fatigue, aches and pains as signs of physical debility. Any challenging physical activity needs strength and stamina. One can build it by practice. Let's now see the difference between self-awareness and self-efficacy. Self-awareness is about the awareness of our qualities. Self-efficacy is the perceived belief that we have in our own abilities. Self-awareness is being aware of your goals, about your strengths and weaknesses and about your beliefs and philosophy in life. High self-awareness is the ability to clearly articulate why you are doing what you are doing. Let me end this chapter with a quote from Tom Pillier. Confidence is deciding you're unstoppable, not that you'll ever, never fail. Hello, I am Gauri Sirur. Today I want to talk about a psychological pattern called imposter syndrome. It was first identified in 1978 by psychologists Clance and Imes. The imposter syndrome is a self-belief that you are not as good as others perceive you to be. An estimated 70% experience these feelings at some point in their lives. A person with imposter syndrome has a persistent fear that he will be exposed as a fraud. Many of those who feel, I am not good enough, tend to say, I am just lucky. We tend to remember what we did not achieve, more than what we did. This is how imposter syndrome manifests. Inability to realistically assess your competence. Fear that you won't live up to expectations. Sabotaging your own success. Berating your own performance. Setting unrealistic goals resulting in disappointment when you fall short. Stephen Worley, business coach, interviewed over 500 people to uncover their secrets to success. For his question, what would you recommend to people to transform themselves? Over half of them said, writing a daily journal. Daily journaling provides you with data that enables you to evaluate yourself objectively. Keeping a daily diary has been a key habit of successful people through the ages. One of the earliest known diaries originates from the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius. A good place to start is to write about an area of your life you want to change. Starting a journal can be intimidating. But when you understand that you are keeping a journal for no one but yourself, you will get over this fear of writing. Robin Sharma, one of the top five leadership experts in the world, best known for his book, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, says, Keeping a daily journal has not only changed my life, it saved it. You might wonder, what exactly should I write in my daily journal? Here are some tips about what you can write. Actions that enhanced your self-esteem. Creative ideas that you implemented in the course of the day. Actions that demonstrated your self-confidence. Actions that demonstrated your love for yourself and for everything around you. Actions of listening to others and the words that you spoke to inspire or console others. Let me end this chapter with a quote from Marcus Aurelius. Whenever you are about to find fault with someone, ask yourself the following question. What fault of mine most nearly resembles the one I am about to criticize? Hello. I am 
Padmaja Kundaji. Today, I want to summarize two TED Talks on self-awareness. The first talk is about appreciating the beauty of imperfections in us. This talk is by Brené Brown, vulnerability researcher. She observed something interesting during her research work. When she asked people about love, they would tell her about heartbreaks. When she asked them about belonging, they would tell her about their experiences of being excluded. When she asked them about connection, the stories she got were about disconnection. She also noticed from all the stories she collated that there were two categories of people. Those who had high self-worth and those who struggled for self-worth and were always wondering if they were good enough. Those with high self-worth believed that they were worthy of love and belonging. They had the courage to accept themselves as they were and the courage to accept their imperfections. They had compassion to be kind to themselves. This authenticity and acceptance of their vulnerability helped them build connections. They had realized that they could not say no to grief, shame, fear and disappointment and say yes to joy, gratitude and happiness. They learned to accept and live with the whole package of emotions and not the positive part alone. In essence, a great part of self-awareness is appreciating the beauty of imperfections in us. Hello, I am Mohit Nilekani. The TED Talk I want to talk about is by New York Times columnist David Brooks. David talks about resume virtues and eulogy virtues. The resume virtues are those that are the skills you bring to the marketplace and the eulogy virtues are those that are about who you really are. David's talk is an essence of what he learned from Joseph Soloveitchik, a rabbi and author of The Lonely Man of Faith. Soloveitchik wrote about two sides of each of us, Adam 1 and Adam 2. Adam 1 is ambition, an external side of us. Adam 2 is goodness, our internal side. Adam 1 wants to conquer the world. Adam 2 wants to hear a calling and obey the world. Adam 1 savors accomplishment. Adam 2 savors inner strength. Adam 1's motto is success. Adam 2's motto is love. Adam 1 is built by building on your strengths. Adam 2 is built by fighting your weaknesses. Self-awareness is nothing but appreciating the Adam 1 and Adam 2 within us and observing the constant confrontation between the two. Let me end this chapter with a quote from Ralph Ellison. When I discover who I am, I'll be free. Hello, I am Devyani Sarur. Today, I want to summarize two books on self-awareness. The first book, Insight, is by Dr. Tasha Yurik, organizational psychologist. The book starts with a quote from Socrates, The unexamined life is not worth living. Tasha says, self-awareness or self-examination is the first step if you want to become your best self. Tasha says, 95% of people think that they're self-aware, but the real number is as low as 10% to 15%. The book Insight is a guide for your journey from self-blindness to self-awareness. The first step is to move away from self-blindness. We do this by clearly understanding these seven focus areas. Values, the principles that guide us. Passions, what we love to do. Aspirations, where we want to go. Environment, the ecosystem we need to remain fit and engaged. Patterns, our habits which are a consistent way of thinking and behaving. Reactions, how we react and reveal our strengths and weaknesses. Impact, what kind of impact we want to have on others. The next step is to validate or introspect regularly to check our progress against the seven focus areas. 
If you find a gap between the defined and the actual, don't ask why. Concentrate on how. The second book I want to summarize is Strengths Finder 2.0 by Tom Rath. Strengths Finder 2.0 is the essence of Tom's research on how work can improve human health and well-being. Tom says, when you're using more than one strength while working on a task, your talents aren't added, they're multiplied. Tom's success and happiness formula centers around engaging three to five of your top strengths daily. Some great tips from Tom are, for best results, focus on doing what you are naturally good at. Time spent developing areas of weaknesses is time ill-spent. Partner with people whose abilities may differ from but are complementary to your own strengths. Diverse teams are more effective because they have a larger pool of strengths to draw from. Encourage peers and direct reports to focus on utilizing their strengths, not areas of improvement. Build your activities and your schedule around your strengths. For world-class performance, identify areas where you are using more than one personal strength at a time. Let me end this chapter with a quote from Ernest Hemingway. You can't get away from yourself by moving from one place to another. I'm Shamal. Today I want to summarize two movies on self-awareness. The first movie is Wild Strawberries, a 1957 movie by Ingmar Bergman. It is a movie about an emotional journey of Dr. Isaac Borg, a retired physician. It is about how Isaac is forced to relook at his life through memories, nightmares and daydreams about old age and death. Professor Isaac Borg is a widowed 78-year-old physician. He sets out on a long car ride to receive an honor from Lund University. During the trip, Isaac meets a series of hitchhikers, each of whom sets off memories into his troubled past. Isaac finally arrives at his destination and receives the honor. As he goes to his bed, after the ritual, he is overcome by a sense of peace and the dreams of family picnic by a lake, radiating his face with joy. In one day of his journey, Borg manages to transform his long-term despair into hope for the future. What do we learn from this movie? Death is inevitable and we must remember to give importance to each opportunity that life gifts us. Even when you grow old, you are capable of learning new lessons, building new relationships. The second movie I want to summarize is Ship of Theseus. The three stories in this film are united by the theme of organ donation. All the three characters need or have undergone organ transplant. The first story is about a blind photographer, the second is about a mom, and the third is a stockbroker. This movie is a philosophical exploration of human existence and the purpose behind the creation of mankind. The movie Ship of Theseus asks you to look beyond yourself and beyond the inner walls of your beliefs and the illusions of your perceptions. The movie ends with the platonic allegory of the king. Plato argues that human beings are imprisoned in the cave of their own existence, falsely believing the temporary as having permanence. What do we learn from this movie? Human beings are works in progress that mistakenly think they are finished products. We are not clear which you is you, the person you are today or the one you will be in 50 years. Which aspect of you is I, your philosophical body? your thoughts or your actions. Let me end this chapter with a quote from Carl Jung. Everything that irritates us about others can lead us to an understanding of ourselves. Hello, I am Snehal Sirur. Today I want to share my learning about self-awareness skills from two mythological stories. The first story, The Flight of Icarus, is from Greek mythology. King Minos has imprisoned Icarus and his father Daedalus on the island of Crete. The only way they can escape is to fly across the sea. They attempt to fly by attaching to themselves wings that Daedalus constructs from feathers and wax. Daedalus tells Icarus that he should fly neither too low nor too high. If he flies too low, the dampness of seawater will clog his wings. If he flies too high, the heat from the sun will melt the wax of his wings. 
As they take off, Icarus is overcome by the thrill of soaring through the skies. He ignores his father's advice and flies close to the sun. The wax on his wings melts causing him to tumble out of the sky and fall into the sea where he drowns. What can we learn from this story? We must be aware of our strengths and weaknesses. We must accept those tasks where we have strong capabilities. We must be brave enough to spread our wings but wise enough not to fly too high. The second story is about Ganesha and Kartikeya from Hindu mythology. Parvati had a divine fruit and both children wanted it. Shiva told their children, Kartikeya and Ganesha, that the one who circled the world thrice and came back first would get the fruit as a prize. Kartikeya quickly got on his peacock and flew off to circle the planet Earth. Ganesha, well aware of his enormous size and his tiny vehicle, the mouse, realized that he could not circle the planet fast enough. After some thought, Ganesha began walking around his parents. By the time Kartikeya returned, Ganesha had already completed three rounds. When asked to explain, Ganesha said, You went around the world. I went around my world. What can we learn from this story? Self-awareness is being aware of our abilities, strengths and weaknesses and planning our lives accordingly. This story highlights the importance of thinking clearly, especially in adverse situations. Panic clouds our judgment, so we need to master the art of utilizing available resources to make the best out of adverse circumstances. Let me end my reading with this quote from Socrates. The unexamined life is not worth living. We hope that our efforts helped you understand the basics of self-awareness skill. A regular listening to this audio will be our reward. Thank you.